Welcome back. This is part 4 yeah, of chapter 19. Okay, we are looking at the cost of float. Yeah, let me just get the pointer here. Right, I can't get the pointer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Now, the cost of float is the opportunity cost of not being able to use the money. Yeah? This is received but not yet available. This is for collection float. Yeah, all right. Suppose the average daily receipt is 3 million with a weighted average delay of 5 days. Yeah, so this is the so it is collected uh, yet unavailable to earn interest yeah? that is what it means yeah you receive but it takes five days for this check to clear yeah what is the average daily amount unavailable to earn interest yeah that's the question so this average daily amount is collected yet unavailable to earn interest yeah so this will be the average daily float which is adr multiplied by wad yeah? weighted average delay this is 3 million here. This is the average daily receipt. Okay, average daily receipt is 3 million. Multiplied by weighted average delay of 5 days. Yeah, so it will be 15 million. Okay, so this is uh, 15 million is the average daily float. What is the NPV of a project that could reduce the delay by 3 days? Yeah, if the cost is 8 million. Yeah? Now, what is the NPV? Yeah? This is the ADF. So if you, did, uh, you reduce the delay by 3 days, so it's 3 days multiplied by 3 million. Yeah? So 3 days multiplied by 3 million is 9 million. Okay, so this is what you say. This is the net present, this is the present value of your benefit. It means you save, yeah. This is how much you stuck in uh, float. Yeah? This will be stuck in the banking clearing system, yeah, 15 million. If you can reduce the delay by three days yeah, from five days, okay, you reduce the delay by three days, that means the delay is only two days now. Yeah? So, if that is the case, okay, you actually save nine million, yeah? three days multiplied by three million because every day is three million. Yeah? So, nine million is actually released from this 15 million. Yeah? All right, so you, you still have six million stuck in the banking clearing system. But you save 9 million and if your cost is only 8 million, you save actually 1 million. Yeah? The net present value is 9 million here, minus this 8 million, therefore there is a savings of 1 million. This is called net present value. Yeah? This is the net present value means net benefit, net present value of benefits minus the present value of costs. Yeah? So that is what we mean by net present value. So if it is 1 million, then you should accept, yeah, NPV is the net present value, which is similar to cost-benefit analysis, where the present value of all cash outflows, costs, are deducted from the present value of all cash inflows, which are benefits. Okay, so in this case, it's 1 million NPV, therefore you should accept the project. If the NPV is negative, yeah, it means that your cost is greater than your uh, benefits yeah? and therefore you should reject the project in this case the benefits are greater than the cost therefore you should accept the project yeah all right let's show this yeah? illustrate this uh, example in spreadsheet yeah what we mean by this nine million savings yeah all right so we look at the spreadsheet now, now let's look at this example we said that there will be three million yeah, collected every day okay but this collection will take uh, a few days yeah for it to clear yeah okay five days yeah? we, will, we were told in the slide okay that it, it will take five days to clear now let's look at this and yeah? this is day one day two day three day four day five and day six yeah now on the first day yeah? at the end of the first day there is no float there is no clear check but you collect, yeah, in day one, you collect 3 million. So your ending float is 3 million. Float here means you have received this, but it has not cleared. Yeah? This has not been cleared. Yeah? That means it is not available yet. You receive it, your uh, cash balance, yeah? your book balance goes up by 3 million, but your bank balance is still zero. Yeah? Therefore, your ending float is 3 million. Yeah? This is... Uh, Actually, it should be negative 3 million, but we ignore that. Yeah? Negative 3 million will be the uh, collection float. Yeah? Negative, but we ignore the negative here. Yeah? Then second day, the float, yeah? the beginning float is 3 million from here. The ending float 
for the first day will be the beginning float for the second day. There is still no clearance because this collected payment will take five days. Yeah, after five days it will clear. Yeah, so this is still being collected. No clearance here. Then you collect another three million for the second day. So your float becomes six million now. Yeah? This three million plus this three million here. Yeah? So therefore six million is your new float. Third day you have a float outstanding of six million. No clearance again yeah? because this payment here, the first payment to clear, will only clear here yeah? after five days. Yeah? It's one, two, three, four, five. So on the sixth day, this first payment becomes clear okay so here also there is no clearance yeah here the fourth day again no clearance yeah? and the fifth day again no, no clearance yet this this first payment or first receipt yeah has not been cleared here yet it will only clear here yeah therefore this three thousand three million here three million here three million here three million here and three million here yeah therefore your total will be 15 million yeah that will be your float that is what we mean by uh, five, okay, five days multiplied by three million. Yeah, so this fifteen million will be stuck. Yeah, and this uh, the first day it's three million, second day the float goes up to six million, third day nine million, fourth day twelve million, fifth day fifteen million, and the sixth day. Note, note what happens on the sixth day. Yeah, you have a beginning float of fifteen million. Okay, this ending float will be the beginning float here. But there will be a clearance of 3 million yeah? because this 3 million that you receive on the first day will clear on the sixth day. But on the sixth day, you also receive another 3 million for that day. Yeah? Therefore, this will offset this. Okay, But you will still have 15 million stuck. Yeah? That means your float yeah, from this day onwards will always constantly be 15 million. Yeah? Even on the seventh day, eighth day, and so on, you can keep going. Yeah? And your ending float will always be 15 million. That is what we mean by this. Yeah, the float will be the amount of money stuck in the clearing system, in the bank clearing system. So it will always be received, but it is not available for use yeah? because this is not reflected in your bank balance. Okay. Now, if you can reduce the float from five days, here yeah, you have five day float. Okay. If you can reduce it to two days, yeah, that means you reduce it by three days, yeah, one, two, and three. That means this first payment, okay, will be collected on the third day, all right. So your float now will be three million, six million, and six million only. Every day will be six million, yeah. Every time there will be a six million dollar, yeah, float. Here it will be fifteen million. So the difference between these two will be. 9 million. Yeah? Of course, first day there's no change, second day no change. Yeah? But third day onwards, there will be a saving of 3 million. Fourth day, yeah? a saving of another 6 million. Fifth day onwards, the savings will always be 9 million. Yeah? Right? This is the current float. This is the new float. Yeah? If you can reduce the delay by uh, 3 days. And therefore, it means that you actually save yeah, 9 million, 15 million which is stuck, now it becomes 9 million. So you save, this 9 million becomes available. Yeah? Uh, actually it becomes available on the 5th day yeah, as it indicates here, but because the, the change is very little, yeah, we assume that this 9 million becomes available on the 1st day. That's the assumption, yeah? it's like assumption, a uh, simplifying assumption that we make yeah, to make our analysis easier. Yeah? So this is the present value of your benefit, 9 million. If this costs you 8 million to actually delay yeah, from here, okay, you want to bring it here, yeah, meaning available uh, on the third day rather than on the sixth day, okay, you pay, you incur a cost of 8 million, it is okay. Why? Because you save 9 million, you have the ability to pay 8 million. Yeah? And yet, you make a saving of 1 million. Yeah? That's the net present value that we have seen in the previous example. Okay, I hope that is clear. Let's go back to the slides. Alright, yeah? so that uh, that was the illustration of this example in the spreadsheet. Yeah? Let's move on. Alright, yeah? this is the cash collection. We move on to the next topic. Yeah? This cash collection okay, will, will involve a few events. Yeah? 
when the payment is mailed, yeah, payment check is mailed, the payment check is received, okay, received by your uh, supplier, yeah, if this is where you make the payment, yeah, so this is uh, actually uh, disbursement uh, float, yeah, disbursement float rather than collection float, okay, but uh, you mail the check, then this uh, check is received by your supplier, then your supplier deposits this yeah, in the bank in their bank, and then the bank makes the cash available yeah, for your supplier, and it becomes unavailable. Yeah, that means it's not uh, no more your property; it becomes your supplier's property. The cash is transferred, okay, and reflected in your supplier's account, and it is also reflected as negative, yeah, a deduction in your account. All right. So there is mailing delay, there is processing delay, this is called mailing time, yeah? mailing delay or mailing time, this is processing delay, and this is the availability delay, yeah? the point between these two events. Yeah? All right. And this total is the collection delay. Yeah? This collection delay applies for disbursement float. Yeah? Mailing time is relevant for disbursement float, but not for collection float. So this mailing time component is relevant for disbursement. Yeah? But if we take collection float, this component is not relevant. Yeah? So this is blank. Yeah? There won't be any mailing time. Yeah? Why? Because as disbursement float arises with payment check mailing, yeah? that is point here. Yeah? So at this point, the disbursement float arises. But collection float arises only when the receipt check is received yeah? at this point. Then your customer mails the check to you, that is this point, yeah? but that will not be reflected in your book. Okay, when the payment is actually received, okay, so this, yeah, your uh, book balance goes up, yeah, the payment is received, but there will be a processing delay, yeah, before you deposit this in your, uh, with your bank, okay, and there will be availability delay before the bank makes the amount available for you to use. Right, so this is uh, the collection delay or the disbursement delay. Yeah? All right, one of the goals of float management is to try to reduce the collection delay. Yeah? If you are talking about collection, we want to reduce this collection delay. Yeah? Why? Because that will reduce the amount of funds or cash yeah? tied up as float in the banking system, in the clearing system. Yeah? But if you are talking about disbursement float, yeah, then uh, we are not trying to reduce yeah? we will try and maximize or capitalize as much as we can on the payment delay yeah? if it's disbursement yeah? so there are several techniques that can reduce the various parts of the delay this collection delay yeah? all right we look at some of these methods yeah? one method is to actually accelerate the collection yeah? to reduce the collection delay this is to do with collection float, yeah? not with uh, disbursement float, yeah? with collection float. Let's look at this example. Your company does business nationally. It means this is a US company, yeah? so nationwide. Okay, and currently all checks are sent to the headquarters in Tampa, Florida. Yeah? So here you need to know a little bit of uh, geography yeah? in uh, the US. So this is in the state of Florida. Yeah? Right now you're considering a lockbox system. This is a system which is available in the US, yeah, widely practiced. But this is not available in Malaysia. Yeah? But it's a good system to uh, study to see how this reduces the collection delay. Yeah? Uh, that will have checks processed at uh, three locations. Yeah, one is Phoenix, okay, San Luis, and Philadelphia. Yeah, three places. One, two, and three. Yeah, three places. The Tampa office will continue to process the checks it receives in-house. Yeah? So that will be four here. Yeah? Florida is one. Then Phoenix, San Luis, and Philadelphia. Okay. Now, if you uh, implement this lockbox system, the collection time will be reduced by two days. This is your savings yeah? on average. Daily interest rate is given. Okay, this is 0.01 percent. Yeah, note that this is daily, yeah, daily rate. This is the period rate yeah, that we have seen in uh, chapter six. Then average number of daily payments to each log box is 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 checks. 
average size of payment is 5%.